Hey everyone, welcome to another Photoshop color grading video. This time we are going to turn this image into this one. We are going to add way more intense colors, make the whole scene a little bit darker and then finally maybe also add a little bit of autumn glow. To follow along make sure to grab the raw file, you can find the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. First of course the raw adjustments. I will be doing them in the camera raw editor and what I want to start with is I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color going to Adobe Standard. This will further lessen the contrast. You can see the whole image looks quite colorless and flat but we're going to change that. Let's expand the basic panel. The first thing we can do in regards of the color grading is to adjust the white balance. At the moment the whole shot is more on the warmer side. We can change that by bringing down the temperature, introducing a little more blue, especially on the left side. Adjusting the tint, you could add a little bit more purple to this image depending on what you want. I however think I'm going to leave it as it was around here. Next, before we continue working on the colors, we need to adjust the base exposure, giving this image some more contrast and adjusting the brightness overall. I'm doing this by bringing down the exposure since I think the whole image is way too bright and I do want to make it darker. I continue by dropping the highlights which should reveal some more details in the sky which is the brightest area of this image. And then since we don't want to lose too much details in the dark areas, I'm going to raise the shadows carefully. Okay, I think this looks much better already. Looking at this histogram, you can see there is some kind of overexposure going on in the red parts. Let me just click on that little arrow up there to make it visible and you can see that's an area which is not that important and actually it doesn't really look overexposed. So that should be fine. I do want to add a little more sharpness to the smaller details of this image so I'm going to bring up the texture and at the same time I want to give the whole shot a softer look so I'm going to drop the clarity. This looks pretty good. To make the shot even softer I could bring down the dehaze. Keep in mind bringing down the dehaze will make everything slightly brighter but I think this looks great. So after adjusting the brightness of the image, you can see it looks much better in general. However, we are still missing some colors. So to change that, I'm going to bring up the vibrance. And I also do want to add some saturation right away. And here we have a way more colorful image. So the next thing for me to do is still not the color grading, but I do want to add a few masks, enhancing this shot locally. What I mean by that is I'm going to grab a linear gradient first and with this linear gradient I want to target most of the sky like this. Let's make the edge a little softer by stretching it. And in here I just want to bring up the contrast to make the sky more interesting. Should be enough already. Now I'm going to add some stronger glow on the right side of the image and here I'm using a radial gradient. So let's create a big one like this and just drag it over the edge right there. Now this panel is slightly in the way so let's move it real quick. I'm going to place the center outside of the frame just to get a more natural glow effect. I'm going to make this area quite big and in here let's bring up the blacks and I also want to bring down the dehaze. This is a very heavy effect and you can also see the overexposure in the red parts is rising. I however think this is not a big deal. So let's just continue by dropping the dehaze. There are some weird things happening with the histogram but at this point I don't really care since I really like how this looks. Alright. Due to those two changes we are losing some more colors in here. To change that I'm going to pump up the saturation. And I also do want to add a specific color tone to this bright spot by clicking on this little box down here. I do want to add a warm hue. So let's drag this point somewhere up here in the orange range. And for the saturation, I'm not sure if I want to go as high. Let's turn it down a bit. Or actually, let's turn it up. I think this looks better. Now let's hit OK. And here we have our glow effect. Pretty cool. 
And finally, I want to add another radial gradient for the boardwalk in the center. In here, I just want to have some more clarity, so let's raise it, which will make this boardwalk just more interesting. Perfect. And that's already it for the local adjustments. Turning them off, you can see it's a very subtle change, but it looks so much better in my opinion. Now for the more interesting part, the color grading. Let's go ahead and expand the color mixer panel. Here I do want to start in the hue panel. And what I want to do with this image is I do want to slightly change those yellow color tones up there in the sky, making them look more orange. How can I do that? Simply by adjusting the yellow hue. This means I am going to drop it slightly and thus all the yellow tones will appear a little more orange. Just like that. I can also work on the purple hue and I can bring down the purple hue just to fix any strange color cast going on in the blue part of the sky. Just like that. Hue looks good for now. Let's switch over to the saturation stuff. In here, I do want to bring up the orange saturation, making the sky more vibrant. And I think I can also bring up the blue saturation. Perfect. And now that we have set up the base image, let's go ahead and go into the color grading tab itself. Here, we are going to do the split toning. And the split toning for my sunset images is the most important part by far. You can see that when I'm going into the highlights by clicking on this little circle right there on the right side. And here we have a color wheel with a bunch of different sliders. I mostly only use the hue and the saturation slider. But if you want, you can also click around in this color wheel itself. But I think this is not that precise. So let's reset that by double clicking on it. Now, what I want to do is to bring up the hue first. Since we're working with the sunset and I do want to have warm highlights, I'm going to pick a warm hue. And you can see as I drag around this slider, there's a small round indicator going around the color wheel to tell you which color we are aiming for. So let's go somewhere in the orange range again like this. Of course, since we not have touched the saturation, nothing has changed. But for this image, I do want to really have a strong warm color tone over the whole image. So I'm going to bring up the saturation all the way. And look how this will change the image. Going from this flat scene to this warm colorful image. But now we can continue going through the midtones and the shadows. To get into the midtones, again, click on this small circle up there right in the center. And depending on what you want, you could either go with a warm hue like this and again bring up the saturation, making the shot even warmer. But I, however, want to add a little more color contrast. So what I want to do is, let's bring down the saturation again. I want to pick a cold hue. Let's go somewhere around here. It's roughly the opposite of the highlights, which were in the orange range on the color wheel. After setting up the hue again, we want to bring up the saturation, just giving this image some more vibrance and you can see how those midtones are turning blue. Of course, this is way too much. So let's turn it down to only have a very subtle color effect on here, just like that. We can do the same for the shadows. Again, just click on that circle on the left side. Here again, we are using a cold color tone. So pick a blue hue. And for the shadows, I always go with a very low amount of saturation, just like that. Now turning off the color grading, you will see what a huge impact that had on the image. But we can enchant the color some more. Let's collapse the color grading panel and head into the calibration panel all the way down. Here, what I like to do is to just play around with the blue primary. This means, let me drop the hue, which will give us some more intense red tones and also give the blue tones somewhat more of an aqua color cast. To further improve this, we can of course bring up the saturation. And that's all there is to do in the calibration tab. Again, I can turn it off so you can see the difference, but it might be hard to spot with the YouTube compression going on. All right, but enough for the color grading for now. What I want to do next is the sharpening in the details tab. 
In here, I'm always following the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius, I increase the details, then add a bit of masking. By holding down the Alt key, I can see where the sharpening is happening. And of course, I only mainly want the boardwalk to be sharpened just like that. And then I'm bringing up the sharpening. Perfect. And with this, we have done all the raw adjustments needed, going from this flat colorless image to this edited raw file. Of course, there are a few things left we can tweak in Photoshop. So let's open up this object. First, I want to clean up this image. You can see a bit of vignetting in each corner because of the filters I used on my lens. For that, I zoom in and let me let me try it fixing it with the content aware fill. So I'm grabbing the lasso tool by pressing L and then I'm just making a rough selection like this. Hit Shift F5, choose content aware and hit OK. Perfect. Let's do it on the other side. Make a rough selection, Shift F5 and hit OK. Perfect. OK, now there are also some pillars coming out of the water. I do want to get rid of them as well. Again, just using the lasso tool, creating a rough selection around them and their shadows. And let's try the content aware fill one more time. Looking pretty good, I think. So let's continue working our way through the cleaning process. Let's try it again. Perfect. As there are some leftovers going on in the water. I'm going to fix them again using the lasso tool and the content aware fill. Okay, that looks much, much cleaner. So at this point, we can work on the color some more. I do think this image could use some more warmth. What I'd like to do is to just go into the adjustment layers and here I'm picking the photo filter adjustment layer, which will instantly warm up this image very, very slightly. I think in this case it might be a little too weak, so let's go up here into the density slider and bring it up. Perfect. But we are not finished. We could even do some more color grading. Therefore, let's again go into the adjustment layers here, pick the gradient map tool. At first, of course, this looks very strange as a black and white image, but don't worry. We are going to change the blending mode from normal to soft light first. And then let's bring down the opacity of that adjustment layer. At this point, since we're using black and white for that gradient map, we're just adding more contrast. However, we want to change the colors. So how can we do that? Simply by clicking on the gradient. It's important to understand how this works. Right here, the left side of this gradient represents the shadows. On the right side, with that white color tone, we have the highlights. So in some way, this is like split toning. Let's say we do want to make the shadows a little colder. So I'm double clicking on the black point down here and I'm going into the blue color range. Just set the color up somewhere like this. You can see how the image is changing as I drag around this point. And depending on what we want, we can set up the colors quite nicely. I do want to have a less saturated blue tone, just like that. Let's go with this for now. And for the highlights, double click on the white point. Here again, I'm going with a very warm color tone, somewhere in the orange range, and go ahead and add quite the bright saturated orange tone. All right, so I think this looks really good this way. Let's hit OK and OK. Now turning off this gradient map, you will see a huge difference again, just like with the split toning. And also we have added some more contrast, not just the changed colors. Okay, but enough for the color grading. Let's apply the autumn glow effect. For that reason, I do want to merge all those layers into a single layer. So let's hit Ctrl Shift Alt E, which will create a new layer out of all the layers below it. Then let's head over to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I think this is big enough of a radius, so I'm just hitting OK. And I'm going to go ahead and change the blending mode from normal to screen. Of course, this is way too bright, so again, we just need to bring down the opacity. Just like that. And since I don't want to have this effect over the whole image, I'm going to create a layer mask by clicking this icon. And I'm 
picking up the brush by pressing B and I have set the foreground color to black. So with that black brush I can brush over areas which I don't want to be affected by the Orton Glow effect. And those are mostly the darker areas of the image so you can see how I'm mainly brushing over the left side. That is looking pretty good. Maybe I'm going to mask out some of that top part of the sky on the right as well. But I'm really happy with how this is looking. One more thing I want to add is a vibrance adjustment layer just to bring up the colors some more. So I'm going to push the vibrance and maybe let's play around with the saturation as well. So here we have the finished image. I hope this warm sunset color grading tutorial was helpful. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.